Hello everyone, my name is Tana Shahid. I am Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication in Indian Engineering College, Jodhpur. This upcoming lecture series uh, is going to be syllabus oriented and uh, specifically designed for subject electronics measurement for EC3528. Uh, the first module is power measurement and the topic that we are going to discuss uh, in today's lecture is power measurement at audio and radio frequency. These are different methods that uh, we are going to discuss in upcoming uh, lectures. Uh, these two methods, 3 meter meter and volumeter meter, we will discuss in this lecture. Uh, these all methods are uh, based on uh, the measurement uh, of uh, power on different frequency levels. So, first thing uh, that we are uh, concerned about, uh, how the frequency affects the power measurement. So, as we know that uh, the measurement of power at uh, different frequency, like uh, we know the measurement technique in DC circuit and, and in AC circuit. Basically, we know that if we, sorry, basically we know that if we have this kind of circuit where we have to uh, measure the power dissipation of this load, then we can use voltmeter and ammeter and find out the power. The method, common method is determined that uh, the current falling through the circuit resistance and if you know the resistance value, then we can use the power, uh, we can find out the power by using this formula I square R. If there is uh, no resistance, let's assume there is no resistance uh, as in this circuit, there is no resistance across the load. Uh, there is no resistance in series with the load. Then we can directly measure the voltage of the load and we can use this formula E square by R where E is the nothing but the voltage instead of R square R. These are the common methods that we have been using uh, for DC and AC circuits for lower audio frequency ranges. But uh, for the higher frequency ranges, the equation becomes different. As for lower, uh, lower radio frequencies, as we know that the audio frequency ranges from uh, uh, 20 to 20 kilohertz, and after um, that, we call that the radio frequency. So, lower radio frequency ranges, this ordinarily uh, easier to find voltage current and impedance and find out the uh, find out the power. But when we go to the microwave frequency, which is much higher radio frequency, like in the range of gigahertz, then the measurement of impedance becomes difficult. So determining the power actually uh, sorry I'm not able to highlight this, but uh, you can uh, read these lines. So, the measurement of uh, power at the microwave frequencies become of my, uh, becomes primary importance because it is easier to measure power at microwave frequency than to measure the uh, voltage or current. So, this idea of power measurement in both the circuit at lower or higher frequency is that, that if we if you are able to uh, replace the, you can say, if you are able to uh, substitute a specially designed register having a low reactance and low spin effect, which will be able to dissipate large amount of power, amount of energy, then uh, we can use this, um, the resistance that is having these kind of properties as a substitute for the real load. That is, these kind of things are called, uh, commonly called as dummy loads. So, the method of determining power from a knowledge of resistance and current are widely used to measure the power of the two oscillators and the transmitters. So, all these methods that we uh, basically use, if we can replace a uh, load with a dummy load and find out the uh, power uh, using the formulas that we have discussed. Uh, this in previous slide, then these are the investigating the power measurement in oscillators and radio transmitters. But when we go to them in uh, higher frequency range, then another method that we can apply is that if we can convert the power 
that we are going to determine we need to see and then observe the resulting temperature effects then it will be easier to uh, ignore the effect of frequency in that uh, power so we will be focusing totally on the power of uh, power at that particular frequency so the when large amount of power are involved the method that we are going to use is water calorimeter and if uh, a small amount of power that is some form of uh, uh, sorry uh, the small amount of power if the uh, power measurement uh, we aware of that is it is in the range of microwatt to watt then we can we can basically use the uh, volumeter method So the recent method that has been used in low and medium frequencies are basically uh, these all methods have been used and uh, are being used actually. The cathode tube can also be used to measure the power. It can be used to trace fat and have an area proportional to power per centi. There is another method that is uh, using thermocouples, or you can use a single voltmeter combined in such a manner that it can indicate the power. Three volt meter meter is there, three ohm meter meter is there, and different watt meter meter is there. Now, uh, we are uh, these. Uh, it is not that these meters are not used. These all meters can be used and they are quite um, accurate. But these uh, meters that I have highlighted, highlighted, these are actually uh, practically used, and these are uh, more than a theoretical aspect. So uh, we can say uh, that is, uh, these methods have been used in uh, more of a theoretical approach in a research than in practical. So these methods are basically we uh, have been using in our labs and now. So uh, we are not going to uh, discuss all three methods. We are going to only see uh, how a three meter method uh, looks like. So uh, first, uh, this is the typical arrangement. Uh, there, the uh, load has been connected with a uh, conventional having a uh, reactance of X C, and uh, three ohmmeter have been connected. Uh, the power that has been received, uh, the power uh, of the load, the power uh, in the load can be uh, determined by. This by using the equation, and here you can see what is it? We are looking at the rate here, things, and these currents are the ohmmeter currents of all the ohmmeter connected in the circuit. So this is the basic equation where you can uh, use the, this formula and find out the uh, power of the load. We are not going to um, go in details of uh, the circuitry, as you can see it just a. Uh, Typical arrangement, and uh, we are not going to derive this equation uh, because uh, our focus is uh, mainly on the high frequency power measurement, not in the not in the audio or uh, radio uh, medium, sorry, uh, low or medium frequency range. So, if you are uh, interested about uh, reading three meter meters or four meter meter or what is meter, whatever uh, watt meter meter. You can uh, uh, ask me. I can provide you the material because I am aware. I am sure that you have already uh, uh, you have already learned about these meters in your earlier classes. You can see in your earlier uh, earlier subject. So I am going to uh, go for a meter that uh, that we are more concerned about is the power meter and higher frequency. So this is the power measurement by volumetric meter. So uh, this is the typical arrangement. Volumetric can uh, can be used uh, is actually the volumetric method is used in uh, um, higher frequency ranges in wave uh, current or the transmission line systems. So this is the typical arrangement of volumetric uh, meter. So first uh, we are uh, concerned about what this volumetric actually is. So first thing that uh, we are going to see is what is volumeter. So volumeter is nothing but a temperature sensitive resistor element. As we know that uh, to for uh, uh, you can say this volumeter can have a property of thermistor with directors. 
topological and we will use this element as uh, its element. So thermistor has a negative temperature coefficient uh, element uh, device and dielectric is a positive temperature coefficient device. The metals are used in both the uh, uh, devices, thermistor or dielectric are different. I'm um, sorry, I'm saying devices, uh, it's actually elements. Too. So thermistor and dielectric are uh, basically uh, elements of different metals and uh, has different sensitivities, has uh, different uh, uh, sensitivity in the sense that uh, different frequency, the power change, uh, power uh, causes the change in resistance is different in thermistor and the uh, batteries. So both thermistor and batteries can be made in very small sizes and uh, can be easily mounted in the side of transmission line system. Mm -hmm. That's why they are basically used for you know, volumetric elements. They are both very sensitive elements and can be used in measurement of power as is known as thermal microwaves. So this we know that what is volumetric element. Now that we will go to the arrangement of uh, power measurement. So uh, the typical arrangement uh, shows you that this is the uh, sorry. This is the uh, RF power input that is coming through the coaxial cable. Uh, this is the uh, auxiliary bridge connection. So three important things in the arrangement is this, that uh, we have a volumeter element itself, then volumeter mounting. Volumeter mounting means the connection and arrangement that is causing the incidence matching from uh, coaxial cable to the uh, volumeter element. So important point is that uh, the volumeter element should be mounted uh, properly with the coaxial cable. So here you can see the RF input is coming from this uh, coaxial cable and it has been tapered here to match the impedance with the volumeter element. This uh, stub is only to make the connection complete. That means it should return the disconnection to the ground of the switch circuit. There you can see that uh, impedance matching is very important for maximum power transfer. So that has been achieved by tapping this coaxial cable here with this portion. And this is the volumetro element. Then there is a capacitor, bypass capacitor that isolates the uh, Absolutely please circuit from the RF power and returns the current to our RF input you can see and uh, this uh, the shielding is really important uh, to keep uh, the circuit from uh, uh, to isolation and uh, we can see that uh, the bridge has been supplied with two different power supplies one is the DC bias voltage and another one is audio frequency supply, so we can say uh, lower audio frequency supply. So the element at this point, the element at this point uh, that we have connected in the bridge will, uh, sorry, uh, the element you can see that if the, uh, one branch of the auxiliary bridge circuit. The element at one time is uh, in the effect of three power sources. One is RF input power, another is the DC voltage, and third one is RF frequency voltage. So uh, when the uh, we can say that the uh, the power that is affecting the change in uh, resistance of the volumetric element is uh, summation of all these three powers. That is RF input power, the DC power and the audio signal power. So uh, the once the resistance changes due to these two power and these three powers, uh, the DC voltage, the DC supply, the DC current can be changed through this wave state and it will be changed until the wave state can change the voltage that is being supplied here and I'm sorry I may not be able to complete this because I have only 15 minutes of recording. So I will continue this part in next video. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we will continue this uh, from this circuit in the next video. Thank you.